Welcome back to day two of the Midsummer Streamathon, where you are going to find creatives that are doing live streams or videos for eight hours every day for six days. This is the schedule that we will be following. And today is day two, which is paper making, paper dolls, paper bits, recycling art. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. So let's get started by getting some watercolor paper cut and let's grab some magazine pages like we did before, rumple up some tissue paper and we'll put these um, images on the magazine pages in the background a little bit with the tissue paper. This is what I am going to be utilizing to create my paper dolls. I want to create them out of this magazine page. And of course, I don't want this magazine image so prevalent. So I'm going to rumple up the tissue paper and put it back down. So if you watched me yesterday, you saw me do this when I created the zine. This is kind of the same process, so we're not going to spend a tremendous amount of time with it. So stick with me. I'm not going to bore you to tears, hopefully. Let's just get the rest of that tissue paper laid down. And there we go. And we'll set that off to dry. We'll come back. We'll trim off the excess, excess tissue paper. And then I'll show you what we do to create that paper doll. Okay, we have two sheets that we've put together. They're both, well, I think I have three. We've put together, you know, several. Let's just call it several, several sheets. And now I am going to pull out my gel press. I have some orange. I'm going to allow that tissue paper to dry more fully. And while that is in that drying process, I'm going to create some background for my paper dolls. I have, I just got a full set of these wonky face stencils. So I thought this would be a good time to break one of them in and see how they, see how they work, see how they turn out. So let me grab another piece of tissue paper and let's pull some of that orange paint off the press. And there we go. I kind of like that just like that with the white showing through. But what my purpose is here is to get some paper, some tissue paper, some different types of paper with color on it that I can use for a collage-ish type background to put behind my paper doll that I'm creating with that magazine page and tissue paper. So I'm using um, the calligraphy calligraphy paper and there is that orange and the stencil had a little bit of that orange residue on it so it gave me a little bit of a background where that white would have normally bled through. Now a little bit of magenta and I'm leaving my stencil down. I'm not pulling my stencil up. I'm just going right over top of the orange remnants. I've added some magenta in color. And let's pull that up and see where we are with that. Yeah, I kind of like that too. Again, my here here is my thought process. So I have this kind of wonky face image and I want to create numerous pieces of paper that I can then tear and use to collage my background. And I did that with a kind of a light peachy pinky color. And I'm not real crazy about this one. I think I kind of discard this one or put it in a 
in another bin for future use as a background perhaps. Now some gold. And we'll pull that up and see what that brings to us. Oh, and I do like that one. I think we're getting I think we're getting some pretty pretty good ones. I just need three or four. But we'll keep going until I think we have a good selection. I'm not overly crazy about that really light one. So that's what we have thus far. So let's go a little bit more. And I laid a little bit more of that orange down. And there's a lot of gold remnant there. And now I'm starting to like what, what I am receiving. So I have that bright orange that I really like. The gold and the golden orange. So now that I have some things that I think I can work with, I'm going to start tearing this into shreds. Not really. I'm just going to tear it into pieces. So I want to make sure I have three pieces, at least three pieces of each, so I can have a peach of peach, a piece of each color on each little piece of watercolor paper that I have cut out. And this is just a matter of, do I like the way it looks? And is it is it appealing? So I kind of like that. You know, you have the two eyes there. And, a, and you know, and just trying to create it so that it is visually appealing to me. That may not mean it's visually appealing to everyone, but to each his own, I suppose I should say. I wanted some more of that color on the other, and I wind up, uh, for full disclosure, for, for the end. And one of the things that I've done a little different in these videos that I've never done before, usually I show the finished piece at the very beginning of the video. And in this one, since most of the participants are doing the live stream and they're creating their item right there with you, I thought, I'll wait and uncover what the finished project actually looks like at the end of the video instead of giving you that that uh, preview at the very beginning so we'll see we'll see how that works and you can tell me in the comments if you like that or not but um, this is all a different format for me and most of the other creatives that are participating in the streamathon are doing a live stream and I think as I've told you in my previous videos I can't do that and I can't do that not because I don't want to or not because I think it would be a great idea um, it's just I can't because of where I live and the quality of the internet that I have I literally have to drive 30 minutes to get into a small town where there's a coffee shop or a recreation center or a library that I can go into and use their internet to upload because the speed of upload here is so very slow that one 20 minute video takes over 24 hours to upload. So it's pretty archaic, right? Now they're telling me that they're going to get fiber optics to me soon, but we'll see. So here are the three. I've kind of tucked through the glue process, and as you all know, it, that's just a glue and water mixture. There are the three backgrounds. I'm pretty excited about the way they look. I think they look pretty darn good for that quick and easy way to get them together. And now it's time to turn my 
magazine pages over and visualize my little human form. I don't want it to be, um, I just want it to be the hint, the hint of a human body. So I want this little um, oval for a head, a very narrow little neck, and then just some shoulders, and that's it. And that is um, all I am going to do for my paper doll. And I personally like that very abstract representation of the human form. It is very appealing to me. And I hope that you like it as well. So it's also, as a bonus, very simple and very easy to do. You just take, you know, cut away with your scissors. You don't even have to draw anything. Just kind of keep it in your head and cut. Make that oval for your head. Make your skinny little neck. Throw some shoulders in there and cut to the bottom. And there we have our first little paper form. Now, initially, I thought that I would not, I would just use these as is. But now I've decided that they need to be darker and they need to be silhouettes. So I am going to darken them up once I get them all cut out. You know, the nice thing, too, about adding this tissue paper to the magazine page is it does two things. Number one, it creates a better substrate for paint. And number two, it creates texture. If you crumple that tissue paper first before you put it on, it gives you all kinds of fabulous texture on top of that magazine page. And there, I think I have all of my little people cut out and ready to go. I have quite a family here. Now, initial thought, let me run some ink over them. And I did that on a couple. You can see I have the rusty hinge out there in the upper left. And I did run some rusty hinge ink over a couple. It picked up the texture very nice, but it really didn't create the finished piece that I wanted. So I decided, like I said before, to go complete silhouette. And I am going to paint each and every one of these little paper dolls with the black acrylic paint. And now they are all painted, and let's just kind of figure out where they will sit and how they will look when we get them onto this background. Let's trim this guy up a little bit. He has a little ragged head. Let's make it a little bit more oval. And I like this one because his head is kind of cocked to the left, like he's questioning or she is questioning. So I will put her onto my collage with a bit of the glue and water mixture, or my homemade Mod Podge, if you will.
And I do want one that has, I, you know, I want some singles, but I also want um, to group some as well. So I might put a couple here. I'm trying to decide which two look best together, so we'll settle in and get a couple of glue down right here. I set that aside and let that dry because before I glue that second one down, I think I want to pull out some of that texture. And I have pulled out my gold paste, that is the Sissix Luster Wax. And I want to go over that texture and pull that texture out with this gold wax. So that texture that we created with the tissue paper over the magazine page then we painted it all black. Now we're going to pull that texture out with this luster wax. And I think that is going to really create some interest. Now, what I've decided is I need a home on which to live. And I've pulled out a flat canvas. And I am ad, 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 administering, is that the word I want to use? I am putting the acrylic black ink down on this canvas with a credit card because again, I want texture. So one of these collages is going to live there in the center of that black flat canvas. I've also decided that I would like to use some sari silk I don't have any of the color I want, so I've pulled out my big pot of rusty water, and I'm going to put that sorry silk down inside that rusty water, and I let that sit overnight to allow that silk to kind of pick up some of that color. So here is my finished canvas board, and I'm just making sure that I don't have any white peeking through and hitting it with with the black acrylic paint and you know making sure that it is dry. Now I have my hole punch sitting there on the right and I want to create some holes for that silk to thread through. And I've decided that I'm going to thread that just up one side of this collage to just create um, a different texture, a different pattern, something that will give us an unexpe unexpected visual on this piece. So one hole at a time, we will get these all punched into the side of this and it's, I marked it with my um, Sharpie just to make sure I stayed stayed in line. And now that will fit right there in the center. Once we get that sorry silk ready to go and here it is after it is set for 24 hours in the rust water and I've also dried it. I actually just dried it with my hair dryer and now I'm going to thread it through. To create that rust water, what what I do, um, I have this these big um, plastic containers and I'll find some rusty bits. I usually go over and forage around in my husband's shop and find something that has rusted. And in this particular case, I had a rusty chain. I pulled that rusty chain 
into or put that rusty chain into that gallon jug and filled it with about uh, an inch of vinegar to start activating that rusting and then filled it up the rest of the way with water and that container of rusty water sits next to my table and I use it for all kinds of things. I paint paper with it. Uh, I use it to dye fabric. Um, I use it for any time I want to add a rust effect. I can pull that rusty water out and utilize that. And it's been, I think I've been using the same, the exact same um, little gallon of rusty water for a couple of months now. So I'm not sure how long it will last, but it's still going strong. I just want to glue those into place and kind of flatten them out. I'm going to trim that off. And then I will glue this down to the center of this canvas. That seems kind of blasé to me. So I've pulled out my luster wax and I'm going to expose some of the texture on this canvas with that luster wax as well. And I'm just using my fingers to spread it. I think, you know, there's different ways to use applicators, application for this. I think a lot of people use maybe a sponge. Um, I'm kind of a hands-in-the-mix person. I, I don't mind getting my hands dirty, and if it takes it a couple of days to wear off, I'm okay with that. I just walk around with painted hands. Now that I have all of that done, I am going to go around the outside edge of this to get rid of any white on the edge of my collage. So I have some black ink. And I'm just inking up the edges. And now it can be glued down. And we are very close to a finished piece. This is glitter glue that I am utilizing. We'll prop that down right in the center of that canvas. I'm going to put this heavy book, which is a book of antiques, down on it and let it sit for a good 24 hours. And then when I come back, everything will be glued firmly into place and we have our finished paper dolls. So I've done the paper dolls out of the magazine, the tissue paper, collaged it with some gel press printing and this is my finished piece for my interpretation of the prompt paper dolls. I hope you've had a chance to watch all the other creatives in their live feeds and their videos. This is the schedule and I will see you back tomorrow for drawings, sketches, cartoons, and so forth. So thank you for participating in the Midsummer Streamathon. Again, my name is Peg with Two Oak Crows. Bye for now.